Most professional coaches fall into one of two main categories. There are the victory-minded strategists, and then there are the high-strung guys, the ones who yell and scream and take their jobs way too seriously. And then there's Bill Belichick. The longtime New England Patriots head coach must be doing something right. He's guided his team to eight Super Bowls since taking the reins in 2000, but he's also a hard nut to crack. Stupid thing. The guy rarely smiles and keeps a low profile, for good reason. Let's shed some light on some of the darker aspects of Belichick's life. Jet for a day New York Jets fans probably harbor a special kind of animosity for Belichick. Not only have the Patriots beat the Jets to win the AFC East 15 times in the Belichick era, but there was a time when Belichick could have been leading the Jets to those victories. In early 2000, Bill Parcells resigned as head coach of the Jets, but he had plans in place for assistant coach Belichick to take over. According to CBS Sports, Belichick was announced as the Jets' new coach, then suddenly resigned a day later. He reportedly wrote his letter of resignation on a napkin and said at the press conference, I've been in situations where I was the head coach of a team in transition. Frankly, it wasn't a really good experience for me or for them. Codebreaker Belichick's rivalry with the New York Jets flared up again during a Jets-Patriots game in September 2007, when NFL security caught a man recording the Jets' sidelines with a video camera. The NFL determined that he was taping the Jets' defensive coaches to decode their signals. It would have been a good strategy, if it wasn't flagrant cheating. The New England Patriots caught videotaping a rival team's coaches as they sent signals to their players. The NFL fined Belichick the league maximum penalty of $500,000 and took away one of the team's future first-round draft picks. Mind Games Belichick will do a lot for a win, especially if it's in a game against those pesky New York Jets. According to a source for ESPN, Belichick had thermometers placed in the tunnel from which the Jets would emerge in December 2017. Why? Psychological warfare. The Patriots historically play well in frigid temperatures, and Belichick reportedly wanted to psych out Jets players by reminding them exactly how cold it was. Deflate Gate. The results of the AFC Championship game in 2015 weren't necessarily shocking. The New England Patriots easily defeated the Indianapolis Colts 45-7, but something was amiss. The NFL launched an investigation to determine if the Patriots had intentionally underinflated the footballs used during the championship game to make them easier to throw. Patriots quarterback Tom Brady denied doing anything wrong, although when league officials examined the 12 game balls controlled by the Patriots, 11 of them were significantly softer than they should have been. The NFL suspended Brady for four games, along with two equipment managers believed to have done the actual deflating, and docked the team $1 million. Belichick denied any connection with deflating gate and was never punished for any wrongdoing. Uh, I had no knowledge whatsoever of this situation until Monday morning. Still, many have questioned how something so significant could happen without the coach not knowing about it, particularly one who'd been caught cheating before. Trauma Interference Sure, watching grown men chase a ball and slam into each other can be fun, but the revelations about CTE make the sport increasingly controversial for everyone involved. CTE is a medical condition caused by repetitive brain trauma, including the kind of trauma a player might enjoy playing football. When a reporter asked Belichick what the Patriots do to protect against CTE, the coach dodged the question completely. Uh, well, first of all, I'm not really familiar with whatever it is you're referring to, whatever this thing is. Um, but. It doesn't make any difference. Um. Even after Tom Brady's wife reported that Brady had suffered multiple concussions, Belichick simply told reporters that his team files injury reports in compliance with league guidelines, and that head trauma is what we have medical staff for. Instant Replay Despite his steely demeanor, Belichick has opened his heart on more than one occasion. In 1977, he married Debbie Clark. Their partnership lasted over two decades until they separated in 2004 and divorced in 2006. But Belichick didn't stay single for long. In 2007, Belichick was seen spending time with Linda Holiday, a boutique owner and television lifestyle correspondent he reportedly met at a Florida nightclub. She's also a solid decade younger than Belichick. Though Belichick is usually quiet about his personal life, Holiday is quite active on Twitter and Instagram, and she frequently posts pictures of herself and her dude having a good time. How good? Holiday can actually get Belichick to smile. Sugar Daddy 
Somewhere in the midst of his crumbling marriage to Clark and budding relationship with Holiday, Belichick reportedly had another flame. According to the New York Post, court documents in a divorce case between Vincent and Sharon Shinoka revealed that Belichick had been sending Sharon envelopes of cash on a regular basis. He also supposedly bought her a fancy Brooklyn townhouse, paid for her summer rental on the Jersey Shore, sent her to Disney World on a private jet, and provided her with about $3,000 a month. Among the things Sharon supposedly purchased with Belichick's money were New York Giants tickets, as in the football team that defeated the Patriots in the 2008 Super Bowl. Who's the shady one now? Thanks for watching. Click the Nikki Swift icon to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Plus, check out all this cool stuff we know you'll love too.